Hey everyone, today's lesson is scientific notation versus standard form. If you have your lesson worksheet, take it out now. If you don't, grab a sheet of loose leaf paper and a pencil so you can follow along and copy down the examples and maybe take some notes as we go through the lesson. Let's get started. Here's the problem. We are going to write each number in scientific notation. So if you notice, we have a very large number and we have a very small number, right? And this is the whole purpose of scientific notation is it's a way to write really large numbers or really small numbers in a more convenient way, right? We're going to get rid of all those zeros and we're just going to make it simpler and um, write them in a way in which the numbers are easier to work with. So here's how we do that. Let's take this big number in scientific notation and write it in standard form. So here are our steps down the side. Step one is we're going to move the decimal point until there's only one non-zero digit in front of it. And if there's not a decimal point, we're going to put one at the end of the number, right? So when we have a very large number, it doesn't start out having a decimal point anywhere in it. But we know that there's really one at the end, right, even though we don't write it. So I'm going to put that decimal point at the end. Now I'm going to move this decimal point over to the left until I have one non-zero number in front of it, which means I want to put it right here between the 4 and the 3, because now the only thing I have in front of it is that 4, right? One non-zero digit in front of it. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the coefficient now. The coefficient is the number before the zeros start. So I'm going to write the 4. I'm going to write my new decimal point that I moved over, and I'm going to write the 3 and the 7. And after that, I just have a bunch of zeros, so I'm not going to write them anymore. Step 3 is we're going to multiply this by 10, right? Scientific notation is always times 10. And to figure out the exponent, we are just going to count the number of times that we had to move the decimal. So if my decimal started here at the end, and I had to move it all the way over here between the 4 and the 3, let's count how many times we had to move it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times. My exponent is going to be 12. So the way that I would write this large number in scientific notation is I would write it as 4.37 times 10 to the 12th power. Okay, let's try the next one. So this next one, I have a really small number, right? It already has a decimal, so I'm not going to put one at the end because it's already there. What I am going to do is I'm going to move it so that there's one non-zero digit in front of it. So that means it's got to go right here between the 3 and the 9, right? Because I want one non-zero digit in front of it. So now I've got that 3 in front of it. When I write my coefficient, I'm going to write 3.9, right? One non-zero digit in front times 10. And now I have to go back and count how many moves did it take to get there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So positive 7 is my exponent. Oh, wait a minute, not positive 7. This number started out as a decimal, a really small number. So what kind of 7 do you think that should be right there? Hopefully you realize that it should be a negative 7, right? Not a positive 7, but a negative 7. So very large numbers have positive exponents, and very small numbers have negative exponents. All right, let's go the other direction now. So now what we are going to do is we are going to take numbers that are in scientific notation to begin with and write them in standard form. Now remember what we just said about the exponents. When you have a positive exponent, you're going to get a very large number. And when you have a negative exponent, you're going to get a very small number. So that's going to help remind you which direction to move the decimal point. All right, here we go. For step one, I'm going to write the coefficient. Right? I'm just going to rewrite it. So 1.8705. And then I'm going to take a look at this exponent right here. Now this exponent is a positive 9. That tells me that this is going to give me a very large number. And if I want this number to get bigger, I need to move that decimal point to the right. right? Positive exponents, we're going to move it right. Now, this is very important. 
I am not adding nine zeros on the end of this number. And so many people make that mistake. What I'm doing is I am moving this decimal point nine times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's going to end up over here. I'm going to fill these empty places with zeros. So I am putting some zeros on the end, but I'm not putting nine, right? I only have to put five. Okay, now here's another really important thing. This decimal point is at the end now, right? It's not here anymore. So when I write my final answer, I want to make sure that I'm not putting a decimal point between the one and the eight. We moved it. So it's one, eight, seven, zero, five. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I always write the number out first and then I go back and I place my commas. So this is how we would write our final answer. Be 1,870,500,000. All right, another example. This time we have a negative exponent. Negative exponents give me really small numbers. So that tells me that I'm going to be moving it to the left. Right? And there's a reminder right down here that negative exponents move left. Since I'm moving my decimal point to the left, I'm going to write my 9.87 on the right side of my column here, just so I have some room to move it. I'm going to take this decimal point, right? It's already here. I don't have to put one in. It's already here. And I'm going to move it five places to the left. One, two, three, four, five. So it ends up over here. In these empty places, I'm going to fill in zeros. I've got four zeros I have to fill in. So my answer will be point. Make sure you start out with the decimal point because we moved it. It's here now. One, two, three, four, nine, eight, seven. Make sure you don't put a decimal point between the nine and the eight, right? Each number only has one decimal point in it and it's gonna end up wherever we moved it. I can't tell you how many times I see students write their answer as 0 .00009.87, right? That's crazy talk. We can't have two decimal points in one number. And we moved this over to the left. So that means this is the one and only decimal point in this number. All right, hopefully this quick lesson helps you understand how to convert numbers back and forth between standard form and scientific notation. If you have any questions, reach out to your teacher, and I will see you next time.